Hello and welcome to my channel, This Mama's Faith. It is my prayer today that after you watch this video, you leave feeling inspired by God's word and motivated to serve others. My name is Tabitha Kelly. I am a wife of 10 years, a homeschool mama to six, a joyful homemaker, a lover of coffee and dresses, but most of all, a daughter of Christ. Today I am taking you along while I do some homemaking and share with you what God has laid on my heart this week. I hope you enjoy this video and consider subscribing. Today I have some homemaking to do and while I work and talk to you today, I hope this motivates you to get something done in your home. If you're feeling uninspired or unmotivated, why don't you get up and do some of these things with me. The length of this video is perfect for you to wash a sink full of dishes, fold a basket of laundry, or get yourself freshened up for the day. If nothing else, make your bed and listen to what God is telling you through this video. Welcome to week two of my Proverbs 31 Bible study, the first week where we really dive into this inspiring chapter of the Bible. The verse we are going to talk about today is Proverbs 31.10. The excellent wife who can find, for her worth is far more than rubies. If we look deep at the Bible and God's purpose for woman, we can see that in Genesis, God created woman to be a helper to her husband. So in order to be an excellent wife, like the Proverbs 31 woman, we must be a helper to our husbands. This doesn't mean we should be passive or walked all over. After all, we're not taken from Adam's feet, but from his rib, which shows us that we should always stand by our husband's sides. We can be our husband's helpers in a godly sense and fulfill this role by placing him before ourselves. There are many Bible verses that speak on how to be a godly and excellent woman. There simply isn't any material thing that can compare to the value of a good wife and mother. And there is only one place that we can find the true answers to what makes a woman an excellent wife in God's eyes, and that is in Scripture. Hebrews 13.4 says marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. When it comes to this Bible verse about marriage, it reminds us of the importance of being totally devoted to our husbands. Ephesians 5.33 says, Each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. A man's greatest need is to be respected, and we can do this in so many ways. Simple things like listening without interrupting to huge things like following his lead on situations that come up in your marriage. Colossians 3.18 says, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. At some point, I'd like to make an entire video about biblical submission that God calls wives to. I know it can be a touchy subject for many, but like I said, it's not saying that we should be walked all over, but it is a huge way that we can show respect to our husbands and be an excellent wife. 1 Timothy 3.11 says, In the same way, the women are to be worthy of respect, not malicious talkers, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. I think this shows that a great way to be an excellent wife is to not talk bad about your husband, always to honor and respect his reputation, even among your closest friends. There's no reason to gossip or talk negatively about your husband with anyone. If you have a problem with something your husband is doing, the first thing you need to do is turn to God in prayer. And then you need to communicate that with your husband. Titus 2.5 says, Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to too much wine, but to teach what is good. 
Then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be subject to their husbands, so that no one will malign the word of God. Titus 2 gives us so much wisdom on how we should act as women and as wives and mothers. There are many more examples in the Bible on how we can be excellent wives, godly women, and loving, respectful daughters of God. I challenge you this week to discuss with your husband what he thinks an excellent wife is. Because beyond scripture, you can find so many ideas on what other people think an excellent wife is. Someone on Instagram might think that cooking sourdough bread makes you an excellent wife. You might find a YouTube video of somebody who thinks that keeping a perfectly clean house is an excellent wife. But the only two opinions that matter on how to be an excellent wife is God's opinion and your husband's. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrongs. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 5. We live in a world where many women lie, cheat, and manipulate. They are disrespectful, loud, and immodest. Their immorality is praised as good, and their lack of respect for themselves and others is evident. What comes to mind when you think of a worthy woman? Maybe you think of a family member, your mother, or grandmother, or maybe a friend who has a high-paying job. Maybe it's someone you see on social media who looks like she has a perfect life with a loving husband and lots of beautiful children. Being worthy has nothing to do with how attractive you are, how much money you make, how clean your house is, or how well you cook. It doesn't have anything to do with how fancy your car is, how many kids you have, or how organized your home is. But it has everything to do with knowing your worth comes from your creator. Knowing your life has value and meaning through God and that you were placed on this earth at such a time as this. You simply cannot equate your value from what other people think of you, but only by what God thinks of you. Your status doesn't matter. Not your Instagram followers, your likes on Facebook, or your views on YouTube. You don't have to be some prestigious lawyer to be worthy. Yes, we do need good Christian lawyers and doctors and Christian politicians and Christian celebrities, but most often, good Christians are humble and simple people doing simple things. God sees value in that. So if you are a simple person with a regular life, you can still make a profound difference in the world through the eyes of God. By doing your day-to-day -day chores without grumbling, the cooking, the cleaning, the bathing of the kids, all for the glory of God, you will help to advance his kingdom. To raise your children up in the Lord is a high calling. It is worthy. And as the Proverbs 31 woman shows us, it is worth even more than fine jewels. Knowing your worth is found in God is a fantastic way to live. It takes the pressure off, so to speak, and it helps you to realize that when you have a bad day, it doesn't mean that you have a bad life. 
living in the worth given to us by Jesus' death on the cross is an amazing way to live. And it should also inspire us to be great and to always try our best so that we are honoring God in all we do. Simply put, a worthy woman is seeking God always. She has an understanding of who God is and longs to be in his presence. She knows her identity in Christ and she is always aligned with God's will and purpose for her life. So ask yourself, are you always seeking God and longing to be in his presence? Do you make your decisions based on God's will and purpose for your life? The excellent wife who can find, for her worth is far more than rubies. I hope you enjoyed this week's Proverbs 31 Bible study. I want to thank you for watching this video today, and if it's blessed you in some way, I'd love for you to share your thoughts with me in the comments. Come back every Sunday at 10 a.m. for more traditional Christian homemaking. Subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't forget. God bless you, and remember to glorify God in your simple everyday.